In this video, I'm going to show you how to develop an SEO strategy that actually works. So watch this entire free training because a second method is the key to long-term first page rankings. Let's dive right in. Hey, I'm Nathan Gotch and I'm the founder of Gotch SEO and I've led hundreds of successful SEO campaigns and trained thousands of SEO professionals in my program, Gotch SEO Academy. So if you're new here, this is part four of my free SEO mastery training course. All of the previous lessons will be below this video. So make sure you watch those after you finish this one. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button because you'll get first access to the next video in this training series. Let's jump right in. So the first part of developing a proper SEO strategy is to understand the three quadrants of the SEO process. First, you have the what, second, you have the how, and third, you have the who. Let's start with the what and the how first. So the question is simple, what SEO opportunities exist for your website and how do you optimize for them? So this question can only be answered by performing a complete SEO audit. And make sure you watch the previous video in this series because I dive into performing a proper SEO audit. But with that said, here are six high impact SEO opportunities you should look for on every single website. Number one, do you have low hanging fruits? And these are keywords ranking from positions number two to number 15. And these are the keywords you should attack right away. So go into SEMrush, enter your domain and go to the organic keyword section and then click on the positions dropdown and go to the custom range. Enter two and 15 to see all of your low hanging fruits. And to take it a step further, filter the set of keywords based on KD percentage. Start with zero to 14% in the very easy range to find the lowest competition opportunities. Now the question is how do you actually optimize for these low hanging fruits? Well, there are a few ways and I'll start with the easiest tactics as far as time and resources first. Number one, optimize for organic CTR. So first sort the list to see the top ranking keyword at the top, then copy the keyword and open Google in an incognito window. Confirm the ranking position and if it isn't ranking number one, then there's work to do. Now open up Google Search Console, go to the performance section and click on search results. Click the filter dropdown, click on top queries and enter the target keyword. Then click on the keyword and click on average CTR. If the CTR is below 1%, then you need to optimize. Now keep in mind, there are many variables that affect organic CTR, like the intent of the keyword you're targeting, your position, the presence of SERP features, and the presence of Google Ads. For example, if you're targeting a keyword that has instant answer intent, like what time is it in St. Louis, then your CTR will be extremely low. Or if you're targeting another brand's name like SEMrush, your CTR will also be very low. I would avoid even trying to optimize CTR for these types of keywords. However, in other cases, you can almost always improve CTR. And I consider any page with a CTR below 1% a really good target. And especially if it's ranking from positions five or higher. So the biggest lever you can test is going to be your title tag and your meta description. And I recommend testing many different title tags to see which one produces the highest CTR. Just benchmark your current CTR, come up with 10 to 15 title variations, and then push the variation live and let it collect data for at least two to four weeks. Then just repeat this process over and over until you find a winner. Now your next question might be, what should you test in your title tags? I recommend injecting power words, and here's a list of some that I like to test, and numbers because they tend to produce a better click-through rate, which is why news outlets use them with such high frequency. The second way to improve rankings for low-hanging fruits is to number two, upgrade your content and optimize. So I'll show you how to find on-page SEO opportunities in a second, but the simplest question to ask is, is this content long enough? So sometimes just adding more content to a page will be enough. Enough. And as you'll see in a second, SEMrush will give you a target word count based on the competitors. But word count is just one piece to upgrading your content. You can also dramatically improve the perceived quality and value of your content by creating 100% unique images, adding more visuals, creating dedicated video around the topic and embedding it, and even improving the general design of the page. So the next method you can use to improve rankings for low hanging fruits is to number three, create more internal link coverage. So find relevant pages on your website and build internal links to your target page. And if you don't have relevant pages, then it's an indication that you don't have enough topical authority. And that brings me to SEO opportunity number two in this SEO strategy process, which is do you have clustering opportunities? So keywords from positions number 51 to 100 are what I personally call clustering opportunities. So if a page isn't ranking in the top 50, then there's a good chance that the ranking page isn't targeted enough. 
For example, look at this keyword that SEMrush is ranking outside of the top 50 for, how to add a person to Facebook Business Manager. And notice that the page is about the ultimate guide to Facebook Business Manager. This page isn't targeted enough to rank for this long tail keyword phrase. And this is a clustering opportunity because you can create a dedicated page for this particular keyword phrase and it will rank much better. The next SEO opportunity you need to look for when building an SEO strategy is, number three, is your site architecture optimized? Now there are a few core tenets of internal linking. First, your pages shouldn't be more than three clicks deep into the architecture. Otherwise, it could hurt crawlability and indexability. So the best thing to do is run an audit with SEMrush, and then once the audit is done, go to the Crawled Pages tab in the actual audit, click on More Filters, select Crawl Depth from the dropdown, and then select four plus clicks from the second dropdown. Now you'll know what pages you need to push further up into the architecture. The second part of optimizing your site architecture is to identify pages with poor internal link coverage. So the fastest way to find such pages is to use SEMrush's internal link rank in the SEO audit. First, while on the Crawled Pages tab, click on the dropdown and select Internal Link Rank. This is a proprietary score mechanism created by SEMrush, which gauges how much authority and link equity a particular page has. So if a page has many internal links from pages that have many backlinks, the ILR score will be high, and a low score is an indication of poor internal link coverage. So on the second dropdown, you can select less than 10, and you'll see some pages that need more internal link love. Now the next SEO opportunity to look for in your SEO strategy is to number four, does your website have keyword cannibalization? Keyword cannibalization is when you have two or more pages targeting the same exact keyword phrase. And it's detrimental to your SEO performance because it forces Google to decide which pages are best for the target keyword. And you don't want Google making those decisions. It's our job to direct Google. And in fact, John Mueller, the search advocate at Google, said this about keyword cannibalization. We just rank the content as we get it. If you have a bunch of pages with roughly the same content, it's going to compete with each other. Kind of like a bunch of kids wanting to be first in line and ultimately someone else slips in ahead of them. Personally, I prefer fewer, stronger pages over lots of weaker ones. Don't water your site's value down. So the quickest way to identify keyword cannibalization is to use SEMrush's position tracking tool. Go to keyword research and click on position tracking and then click on new position tracking to start a new project. Enter your target keywords and once the scan is complete, open up the project and then click on the cannibalization tab. This will show you instances of keyword cannibalization for the keywords you specifically entered. The fifth SEO opportunity for your SEO strategy is have you done on-page SEO the right way? Now, at the most basic level, your primary keyword should be in your URL, title, H1 tag, first sentence, and last sentence. But to take things up another notch, I recommend using SEMrush's on-page SEO checker. So go to the on-page and tech SEO section, click on the on-page SEO checker, and start a new project. Then click on import keywords and pages, and then select your preferred option. In this example, I'll use manually. Enter your target page and the exact keyword phrase you wanna rank for, and then click collect ideas. SEMrush will then show you how to optimize the target page from a strategy, content, semantic, technical, UX, and even link building perspective. So make sure you benchmark your performance today and then execute on these recommendations. And lastly, the sixth SEO opportunity to find for your SEO strategy is do backlink gaps exist? So your overall website authority, which is dictated by the quality and quantity of backlinks you have, is one of the biggest ranking factors. And that's why it's critical that you compare your website against your competitors to see if there's an existing gap. And if there is, you'll need to work to narrow that gap. So go to SEMrush's backlink gap tool, enter your domain and four of your top competitors in organic search. Now you'll be able to see the authority score and total referring domain growth over the last 12 months. Ideally, both of these should be growing at a steady pace. And if they're not, then it's an indication that your website isn't producing anything worth linking to or you're not promoting your assets enough. Now keep in mind, you must narrow backlink gaps on both the domain level and the page level to compete for your most important keywords. In fact, you can narrow the backlink gap on the page level and still not rank because your overall website authority is weak relative to your competition. So to see if you have backlink gaps on the page level, just use SEMrush's keyword research tool. Enter your target keyword into the search bar and then scroll down to the SERP analysis. You can then get an average for referring domains and see how your page stacks up. So now that you know how to optimize for all of these SEO opportunities, who should be responsible for doing this work? Well, let me explain. 
A lean SEO team will have the following members. Number one, an SEO strategist. Number two, project manager. Number three, copywriter. Number four, developer. And number five, a virtual assistant or VA. Now here's the funny part. You might wear all of these hats in the beginning and that's okay. But as you grow, you should begin to fill these positions. So if you're doing all of the heavy SEO work, then you need to slowly transition into an SEO strategist or manager. That means you aren't doing the actual physical labor. Instead, you're developing the best strategy based on the unique needs of the target website. Then you're training and leading your team to success. I always recommend bringing on a VA as soon as possible because you can offload many of the time consuming tasks that don't add much value to your SEO campaign. For example, exporting and importing data from SEMrush to a Google Sheet may only take a short amount of time. However, compounded over the course of a year, it's likely hundreds of hours spent on an activity that doesn't produce any economic value. And that valuable time could have been spent on high impact activities like planning SEO content campaigns or building out link acquisition campaigns. So get a VA as soon as possible. Then slowly fill in the other roles like a reliable copywriter, a developer who can make technical changes, and even a project manager to make sure that deadlines are being met and work is staying organized. So that is how you build an SEO strategy that actually works. In the next video in this series, I'm going to show you how to do on-page SEO like a pro. So if you got value from this video, please like it and subscribe right now because you won't want to miss the next video in this series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.